Hey guys, welcome to another Cigar Chat brought to you live from CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are out there in the world today. Uh, spend some time with us. Appreciate it. Rob from Cigar Federation here with you as always. Rainy California. Logan is, uh, is happy, <sighs> happy peachy self in Texas. How's everything going, man? Oh, man. You already heard all my, my woes earlier, but they're not for the air. But <laughs> let me just say... This face is a man that knows business, and don't you forget it. That's all I gotta say. I know my business. I know your business. I know all about the. Business. I wasn't born yes. I might look like a derelict, but I wasn't born yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. I mean, if I met you on the street, I wouldn't think too much, to be honest. Man, it takes a lot of hard work to grow this. Except Callaway pulls on it now, so um, I'm thinking about shaving it because it hurts, man. I was just gonna say it's, that's getting pretty lush down there. I mean, it's getting. I mean, hell, man. For those of you listening uh, on the radio, we're talking about Logan's beard. Nothing, uh, nothing. We're gross. not talking about private areas. That would be <laughs> inappropriate. It would be. It would be highly inappropriate. On that note, <laughs> that's a great segue. You're welcome. Uh, we've got uh, Scott joining us from a Recluse Cigar. Scott, thanks for taking the time, man. Thank you for having me. And uh, Logan, listen, man, you're, you know, you're bringing sexy back. But the thing is, is that sec, you already got it, man, because sexy would have had to leave the building before you could bring it back. Whoo! Don't let anybody hear me. Oh, oh boy! Hey, guys like, I like, like this guy already. Guys like you are in season this time of year, man. The, when the winter comes, the girls like the warm, fuzzy, cuddly teddy bear type, man. You're in hot. You just stick with it. And I've been eating, storing up for my hibernation in the winter. Like I'm just like a snuggly teddy bear. I'm like a cooler version of like I don't know. <laughs> Is there a teddy bear out there in any shows? What's the one that ate sandwiches? Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra, yeah, and Boo Boo. Yeah, dude. I don't, I don't, Rob's Boo Boo. This is going to be a long show, I can tell already. <laughs> you, when you start off praising Logan, I just, oh, man, I don't know. He didn't know what to do. So we got a lot to talk about. we got a bunch of questions, uh, some audience questions. It's the first time we've had Scott on the show, so we're going to get into some of his background. Talk about that Draconian, which I thoroughly loved. Uh, we're going to be doing some top ten lists uh, coming up here pretty soon, and that is uh, squarely towards the top of one of my lists. Um, <clears throat> can't be the new release list because it was released in 2013, but uh, anyway, we'll get into that too. Uh, so, uh, so, Scott, give us some background for yourself. I know you've been uh, in and around the business for a while, so uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, Rob, I got in the uh, business about uh, 21 years ago, back in uh, early 1993, uh, right after Cigar Aficionado put their first publication out. And uh, I started working with my dad, who was in the industry for 40 years, and my grandfather before him was in the industry. And uh, so, you know, I worked as an independent manufacturer's rep, uh, repping a lot of different companies like Davidoff, Ashton, uh, you know, La Gloria Cabana, several companies out there. And we took a lot of pride in the beginning of a lot of those companies, uh, their start helping them build the brands to get to where they could get to the inside sales force, you know, in-house people and things like that. Uh, after so many years of that, uh, you know, I realized, hey, I've helped a lot of people build their own brands and build their own houses. Maybe it's time that I should start building mine. And, you know, when I came up with that thought, I decided that I wanted, if I was going to do it, I wanted to be completely self-sufficient. I wanted to make my own cigars, not pay somebody else to do it. I wanted to make my own boxes, make my own bands, do everything in-house so that we can be completely self-sufficient and keep our cost control down so that we can keep our prices steady on the market. Now, previous to the cigar business, uh, I was in the music business, believe it or not, wow. and uh, I did that for about 10 years. I had the Kiel Auditorium in St. Louis. and Dude, I, had I know where that is. Austin. What's that? I'm, I'm from Missouri originally. I know where that is. So yeah, I used to live in Brentwood. And, Dude, I know exactly where that is. Yeah, so I lived there. I had uh, the Q Auditorium there, and we scheduled uh, 80 show tours for a lot of different acts. And uh, before that, I was in college, and I was in the Navy, and I was part of the uh, AFARTS, the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. I was a broadcast journalist, so I did uh, broadcast for the uh, for the Armed Forces. Very cool. Wow, you Dude, how a... old are you? <laughs> I told you, man. Any kind of questions like that, you got to be a member of the Secret Cigar Society. I don't want to be, man, because it yeah, involves we, sexual. Yeah, we, we found out how to get into that society. You don't want to know. 
It was a hard no from me. Logan, I think, is still teetering. But I mean, uh, I'm, I'm on the fence right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm, you said, I'm 50 to answer the question. What how, said how I, tur I turned 50 back in May. Never would have wow. guessed it. Wow. Yeah, well, that's a lot of facials and a lot of dermabrasion and tying my ears around the back of my head to make myself look younger, you know, so that's where we get that from. And, and I, I married a woman who's way too hot to be married to me, so that helps out as well. Welcome to the club. Look at that, yeah. Yeah, that's, you, you guys You guys are on a roll. That's good. So, yeah. yeah, you said you were in the music business. You strike me as a crooner. Were you, uh, were you up there singing a little bit? <laughs> if I start singing, dogs are going to start howling. That's the thing, you know, when I was in high school, I always wanted to be a rock star. I had uh, I had long hair, played in a band. I looked like David Lee Roth. You know, I thought I was going to be the next big thing, you know. And, uh, you know, I thought I was the only one, apparently, who thought I was a good singer. That's the problem. <laughs> so, you know, I did the next best thing. You know, I got in the music business and, you know, promoted other people who were much more talented than myself. Very cool. Who are some of the, uh, the acts that you worked with? Uh, we did a lot of country music, uh, like George Jones, uh, Randy Travis, you know, stuff like that. And then Merle uh, Haggard. Uh, we didn't. No, we never did Merle Hack. Never did Merle Hack. That's why I didn't get big. Yeah, we did. We did. Uh, you know, George Jones, Jerry Reed, Kathy Matea. You know, and then we did a lot of shows like um, some uh, '50s rock shows, the Grassroots, and stuff like that. You know, pretty much uh, A-list country, B-list rock. Cool. No, that's uh, that. That seems like that'd be a kind of a fun business to be in. And but I, I could imagine that you did, like you said, you did that for about ten years. That seems like that would be the extent that you would want to be into on that side of the business. Like you get to see enough of it to where it's still cool. And now, okay, I'm gonna get out of here and do something else. Uh, it was a fantastic business, but the thing is, is that there's so many intricate details involved in it, in handling acts and security and venue and all that. There is no way to take a vacation unless you can clone yourself because yeah. in that kind of business, it's very difficult to be able to trust somebody to handle that level of business when you're gone. So for that entire amount of time, I never took one vacation. Oh. And so, you know, one day my dad, who, like I said, was in the cigar business for 40 years, he came to me and, uh, you know, he told me, asked me, told me, <laughs> you know, in an asking sort of way that I needed to get in the cigar business, and I said no. You know, I I was uh, happy where I was at. I never smoked a cigar, and you know, he went away. He came back about three months later, and he said, you know, let me take you out to lunch. And so, you know, he picked me up in my office. We went out to eat lunch. He took me to. He said, you know, before I before I take you back, I got to stop by my office and take care of some business. So I went in there with him. I'm gonna make this short and sweet. I went in there with him, and. Uh, he went back into his office and he started cussing, you know, a few mild cuss words. And, uh, you know, I said, I went, came out of the lobby and I walked around and said, Dad, what's up? What's the matter? He said, well, I was just looking at something. I'm like, what you looking at? He's like, I was looking at these numbers from last year. And so I went in there and I looked at the ledger and I said, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to get in the cigar business, you know, because, and so I, this was during the boom, of course, you know. And uh, so... You know, I, I started smoking cigars. The first cigar I ever smoked that was a premium handmade cigar was a private stock, number 11, that was made by Davidoff. It was like the Avo and Davidoff seconds and Griffin seconds. Yeah. So I smoked that cigar, and I absolutely loved it. And that was what the beginning of me falling in love with the cigar business was and intrigued me to find out more about it and learn about the passion that drives all of us today, you know? Oh, very, no, that's, that's, that's cool. I mean, I, I try to think back, and Logan, have we ever talked about this? What was the first cigar that you ever smoked? Romeo e. Juliet to Reserva Real, circa 2000, in the fraternity house huh. with Matt Brown, the guy who's two years older than me. I, I, I try to remember. I... I the first cigar I, I, well, not the first one that I smoked, the first one I can remember smoking, I actually smoked it with my wife, because we dated for a while, and then we were separated for a long time, and then got back together and got married, but um, we were staying at this place in San Francisco, she had a friend of the family who had a, a house in San Francisco that was up by, um, uh, by Coit Tower, uh, <clears throat> really nice, great view, I mean, it was probably 
three or four million dollars for this place. And it was just a friend of the family, so they let us stay there one weekend. And we walked. It, we were walking back from dinner, and we stopped at a, a liquor store, bought a bottle of, of wine, and I bought some cigars. It was a Macanudo, but I can't. Oh, Macanudo! Oh, Macanudo! Uh, but I can't one? remember. I mean, any, anything specific. It was just. I think it was just a standard Macanudo. That was, a, that was the first one that I can really remember smoking. Not that anybody cares, but it, we don't. don't know, we've never talked about that, so I thought I'd bring it up. So. You know, it's interesting to hear what people, you know, what brings them into the, the cigar business. And, you know, I, I, that Romeo Reserve Real, I think that's a very consistent cigar. I think in my entire career, I've never smoked a Macanudo. You know, uh, the, uh, but the, uh, the Romeo Reserve Real I've smoked, and I think it was a, it seemed like a very good, a very consistent cigar. Yeah, it's very not bad. Yeah, I think that was probably one. I've smoked those in the past, and I, I that might have been the only Macanudo I ever smoked um, that I can think of. Uh, but, um, no, I do remember smoking that outside on the patio. It was really nice. Um, and then my wife was the one who bought me my first humidor and uh, bought me a five-pack of cigars for Christmas one year. She had no idea what she was getting herself She's into. She's cool. Uh, you know, your wife, your wife seems like a very cool chick. You know, they cool. say that uh, most men... Uh, most men marry outside of their pay grade, and most women uh, settle down. You know, I, <laughs> my wife, my, my wife is pretty awesome, and I did. I I married way out of my pay grade. That's that's for sure. Logan, you've met my wife. You can attest to that. She's cool. Um, but uh, I can't talk about her too much because she'll kick my butt. But um, <clears throat> she will. She's so mean. Want to want to get back? We're talking about cigars. Oh, uh, is that what you're here for? <laughs> what's that? Yeah, that's what we were talking. I about. I got a question. <laughs> I got a question. This guy, right, Logan, smart genius, genius there, man. Here it goes. I get. I, I don't get to say anything for the rest of the show. Go ahead. No, you don't, because you, your questions are stupid. Uh, so, <laughs> real question, real question is: we kind of talked about this before the show, and there's an absolute shizer ton of new boutique companies that are coming out right now. I mean, I can barely even keep up with it because the barriers to entry, as we all know, to make a cigar, if you're a gringo and you got some cash. You can make a cigar, maybe not a good one, but you can get a cigar made for you. I'm curious. You said that you could own your own factory. You're you're vertically integrating. I mean, you're buying a damn cello machine. Like, what what was the choice? I mean, why did you make the choice to put that upfront capital in and and do it that way versus in being an actual manufacturer than just being a brand owner? All right. Before I answer that question, Logan, did you say the word Shizer ton? Hey man, we're on we're on FCC man. We got spy satellites, NSA and stuff listening down. So I can't say the word. Every, everybody listening to the show, can we start a hashtag? <laughs> Shizer tug. I would just like to see the spelling of that word, Logan. While I'm answering the question, if you could spell that word and hold it up, and we'll start our own hashtag for that. You know. I I think it's kind of a free flowing word. So you don't necessarily have to spell it uh, correctly, but it also could be substituted. Another one that I like is metric butt ton. So Medi either one, <laughs> metric butt ton. Yeah, that's okay. It's, well, it's a fluid situation. Qualify for that category. <laughs> uh, the uh, So to answer your question, my friend, is that uh, I've seen so many people start brands and hire other manufacturers to make their brands. And then, uh, you know, when business really gets popping, they can't ship the product because the same tobacco that's being used. Wait a minute, I got to see this. Hang on. Okay, I, I couldn't see it. The, the camera clicked. Roz, uh, Rob's trying to. I'm trying to show it to you there. You should be able to see it. It's not on the full screen, man. I can't see that far. I told you I'm 50, man. I'm not 20. <laughs> You got it in the little box down there instead of the big screen. It's okay if you can see it out there in uh, internet land. Yeah. Guys are time. Thanks for that. Anytime you're ticked off about something, we'll start using that word. Shizer time. Okay, so anyways, uh, the so you know a lot of a lot of guys would start brands and then business would get really popping for them, you know, and then. The manufacturer using that some of that same tobacco in the blend on some other blends that he's doing maybe for some other people, and then well whoever's got the most traction is going to get the tobacco. You know whoever's paying the most for the product is going to get the tobacco that that manufacturer has the supply of. 
So the guy who may be paying a little bit less to have his cigars made is the guy that gets short-circuited and he can't keep his product out on the market. Or let's say the box manufacturer decides, well, this guy's catching traction. He can afford to pay more for the boxes. Let me up my box price. And then all of a sudden the box prices are going up. Then what it does to the end consumer is that brand owner is having to raise his prices every two years to try and keep up with the price increases that he's receiving. Well, by owning my own factory with J.R. Dominguez, J.R. Dominguez and I both own the Tobacoletta Leandis Cabanas factory, okay? But by owning our own factory, we're able to produce our own boxes. We can make our own bands if we want to, because we have all the band design and the band machines and everything. Uh, we can make uh, all of our own cigars. We, we're completely self-sufficient, and like I said earlier, we're working on making our own cellophane, but we're, you know, we're going to trade for the cellophane machines. So we got a couple of cellophane machines that we're negotiating. What that enables a manufacturer like me to do is it enables us to have cost control on our product. So on recluse cigars, the Draconian, the Amadeus, you, you, you probably won't see any kind of price increase on the U.S. market for five to eight years. You know, unless the FDA causes problems, and we got to, you know, cover the cost of that. But barring that, based on the recent news, hopefully if Boehner and the other guys get their way, the FDA will have to change their grandfather clause to 2014 instead of 2007. You know, I, I'm sure you guys have heard about that, right? Yeah, well, I have. And just for the record, so everyone knows, where's the senator from? Uh, Boehner? Yeah. You know what? There's there's it's Texas. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you. That's where I, I live. live. I live in Austin. Okay. I voted Sorry, my friend. I should have I should have caught on to that, you know. It's man. cool, man. I led you right to it, man. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink necessarily. Hey, speaking of drink, it may be the Jameson that caused me not to answer that question, my friend. That's all right. So I'm assuming you're Irish Irish Catholic? No? No, not like Catholic, Jameson. but I'm a I'm a Irish Scottish something or other. My last name's Weeks, you know, so we come from England, and my whole family was uh, uh, rooted in New Hampshire. And then my dad, who was from, you know, Massachusetts area, uh, he married my mom, who was from Georgia. So, you know, the two couldn't agree where they wanted to live, so they, they compromised and uh, moved to North Carolina. Hmm. Are you still in North Carolina? I live at a place, uh, where I live is a place called Lake Norman. It's about 20 minutes north of Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And our corporate offices are in Doral, and then we also have warehouses in Pennsylvania. Oh, well. I've got, uh, I've got family out in North Carolina, out in Raleigh. Oh, yeah. Get out there once a year, usually. That's a good area. To visit, we get the uh, the. It's my wife's father who lives out there. We get the full uh, full court press on. Hey, let's go. Let's, we just so happened to show up to this house. It's an open house. Let's go look at it. But yeah, we get those. It's real. He's real subtle. But well, that, uh, like so, a Mack truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? People like that at least are consistent. Those are the kind of people you want. Yeah, no, I, I know we can plan on at least one day looking at houses, and then I come back here and look at houses, and I get depressed because. I could buy, for what I would pay for one house out here, I could buy two houses out in North Carolina, and they'd both have land. It's ridiculous. And, yeah, and out here I get, you know, a one bedroom. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, we're, going down, we're going down the whole uh, Scott Weeks uh, lineage here. We got the, your folks and your, your ancestors came over on the Mayflower and all this. I mailed you guys the, uh, the DNA samples. Did you get it and have them tested before the show? I did, and your original roots come from, I don't know. So uh, you know you can do that on Ancestry.com? Like now, submit now some of your you DNA. That. That's crazy stuff. I'm scared to look. I'll probably be from like some crazy indigenous tribe in some weird place. I don't know. <laughs> DNA, way off topic, but did you see they found the remains of King George the Third Or King Richard? Richard Dude, they found that like four years ago. It was under a church somewhere in England, and they he had the crooked hand in stuff, and yeah, they found him, man. I well, watched the History Bob, Channel on it. Bob's still on dial-up broadband, so he probably just got the news. No, today. no, 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 no. Rob's more high-tech than any of us. This was new news. This was new news. No, dude. I Literally, man. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm talking about the wrong person. 
Dude, but, King Richard the Third, man, the one with the crooked King arm Richards. and stuff. <laughs> Richard the Third, man, that was oh, killed. Awesome, man. Yeah, maybe I don't know. It was King something or other, and I just thought it was kind of crazy that they could do a DNA test and find out that it's really him. How could Dude, you possibly know? But that's way above my pay grade, not what we're here to talk about. Anyways, but, just continue. Anyway, so we're you were talking about you know vertical integration. There were some questions actually about that in the in uh, uh, in the chat room and. Um, I'm going back to, I want to talk about the Draconian because I love that cigar. Um, I posted a review up. If you're looking on uh, Cigar Federation, there's a link to it right there uh, back in September, um, which you guys, this I got that in my, my IPCPR pack. When, uh, when you check into IPCPR, you get a little bag, and it's full of this, that, and the other thing. And I had one cigar in there, and it was the, the uh, Recluse Draconian in there. And I thought it was, it was kind of genius. You guys put an extra band on the cigar. And when you take that extra, it was a huge, huge band. It covered the entire half of the Toro. And when you opened it up, it was a map of where everything was in IPCBR and how to find you guys. I thought that was really smart. Um, but, yeah, the, the MSRP on that cigar is 780 or at least that's what I have in my review. That's crazy to have a cigar that good at that price. The uh, um, Well, thanks for, uh, for that because uh, we're going to raise the prices on it. <laughs> No, you just, you yeah. just told me you weren't raising any prices. Okay. Seven hey, years. That was five minutes ago, man. This is this hey, is hey, it's true. Supply and demand. Demand just went up. Things change. <laughs> Roll uh, with the punches. The, the uh, you know, I, like I like I said earlier, you know, with with 21 years of experience in the business, I wanted to make sure that we didn't psychologically price any of our cigars in any size. Our our whole por portfolio right now runs 24 different facings that a retailer can put on the shelf, okay? And the, the retail price ranges anywhere from $5 on up to eleven ninety five for the Kanu number no. 3, which is a three-hour smoke. Wow. So, you know, our baseline of regular sizes, uh, not our special edition sizes, but our, our base sizes, our, our, our whole portfolio retails from $5 to $9.75. For, and, and, and out of that, that that's, uh, let's see, that's 18 facings out of the 24 facing line, retails for $5 to $9.75. So we wanted to make sure that our cigars are accessible to every market. Two things. One is the reason why we have so many different facings and sizes is because no matter where there's a retailer or an end consumer, we don't want to, we, we didn't, you know, I had so many people tell me, this is where the recluse name came from, by the way, okay? is because it's about leadership. It's about blazing your own trail. When, when I was first coming out with the line, there were so many people trying to tell me what to do and how to do it. You know, come out with only four facings and do it in this price point. Well, to me, it's ludicrous to expect every single retailer in every single market in the world to carry the same four facings. To me, that's like asking the end consumer to shop out of their grandfather's attic. There's no choice. There's, you know, everything looks the same every time you walk in. There's no variations. There's no variables. So we wanted to keep it exciting. So that's one thing. The second thing is they're like, you know, we'll do it in this, do it in that, you know, put it in a, this box and, you know, don't waste all your time on doing all the decorative stuff and stuff like that. That's not my style. My style is I want to make sure that I have the very best product, that we make it the very best way, that we keep the prices accept accessible to every single market, not only in the United States, but in the world, so that no matter what the OTP is in any state in America, that a retailer can still carry recluse and be able to offer it at a reasonable price. Bottom line. Yeah, that's so what when when you said what what states are you guys in? If you pull up our website at uh, reclusecigar.com. There's a retail locator okay. on the site. It's the very first thing says retail, re, find a retailer or something like that. You select on that, pull up your state, and that'll tell you who retails the product in the state. I know right now we have 550 accounts nationwide on Recluse, and we have 800 accounts nationwide on our factory production custom uh, program. Hmm. So we're, we're pretty saturated. I mean, there's 2,000 a little, little more than 2,000 plus real quality retail tobacconists in the United States. So we still got a lot of growth ahead of us. But right now, we're in a pretty good spot. Yeah, that is. Uh, 
I, I, I never realized how many how many. Uh, I have no idea. I didn't know that that number. It's a, it's an interesting it's an interesting and you phrased it interestingly too. So good quality retailers. Um, but no, I mean that makes sense. I I never heard that number before. But um, uh, real quick on that note, just want to remind everybody listening to Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in. We're here with Scott Weeks of Recluse Cigars. Um, we've talked about a little bit of everything. <clears throat> My voice cracked a little bit there. Uh, apparently, I'm going through puberty again. You're ridiculous. Awesome. Um, yeah, we, talked about, <laughs> we covered a little bit of everything in that first segment. Um, Logan, I'm going to go ahead and say who this next segment's brought to you by because I didn't really run this by you. I'm just going to do it. Why don't you uh, just this, go ahead, Rob? This uh, next segment's brought to you guys by my friends at Empire Cigars out in Raleigh, North Carolina. I want to give a quick shout-out to uh, Matt Mangini. Helped my uh, father-in-law out. My father-in-law sent me a text message uh, a couple weeks ago. He was looking for a gift for a buddy of his who smokes cigars. And I started asking specific questions about you know what, what he should buy, and I wasn't getting very specific answers, so I just gave him the basics, you know, Opus X, Padrones, those types of things you give for gifts. And... Uh, and he goes in there and he talks to Matt, and Matt sends him home with feral flying pigs. I just think it's kind of funny that my father-in-law knows nothing about cigars, and he comes out with feral flying pigs. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so if you guys are in North Carolina, that. Give, what's that? Are you talking about Empire Cigars in Raleigh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're down on Strickland Avenue. The guy that owns that place is Hal Rubin. He's a really cool guy. And, uh, I mean, they have an annual pork and puff over there that's phenomenal. Pork and puff. That yes, sounds fun. They make teeth like sexual. And everything. I, got. I, I don't. Know. What's that? Nothing. Nothing. Pork and puff. It sounded sexual. It's nice. Moving nothing. on. My friend. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, just a real quick shout out to those guys. Uh, I've been to that shop a couple of times. They do a good job. So if you're ever in the area and uh, looking for anything, go check them out. So. Uh, we'll Looking get into the uh, Logan, you got any more questions, or can I jump into some of these audience questions? Why don't you just take it, Rob? I mean, you could do it. I mean, okay, I got a question right here. I'm not going to ask Charlie's question, because I'm mad at Charlie. You want to know why I'm <laughs> mad at Charlie? Because he's yes. not going on the cigar safari trip. He's not. Oh. Hurt, my, hurt my heart. Let's just start at the top. Nothing. Which cigar, Scott, the OTG recluse or Amadeus, would you consider to be the best cigar in your brand? Oh, man. Come on. I knew that was how that – when that question started, I knew that was how that was going to finish. That's like asking me to pick – I got three children. I have a, a 12-year-old son, a 2-year-old daughter, and a 4-month-old daughter. I love all those kids, and they're all great. You're asking me to pick one of my kids. How am I going to pick one of my kids and say I love one of them better than the other? But I, Which one's I, getting I the biggest what? college scholarship? <laughs> Not too tough. I mean, I could answer that. I only have one. Uh, so all right. Good. Listen, I'm going to say this. I'm just gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna take me 45 seconds to say it, but I'm gonna say it. All right. I love the OTG because when I began the uh, the 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 whole journey, that is uh, Recluse Cigar Company and Iconic Leaf Cigar. That was the blend that I chose to begin the whole foundation of everything that we're doing on. And that OTG is a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal blend, especially in that Toro size. But then you always have to take what you start with and you have to expand on it and try and make it better. Otherwise, we'd all still be driving Ford Model A's. Okay? So then comes the Draconian. Okay, and then the Draconian gets super sexy with the blend. You got Braziago, you got Peloto Cubano, you got uh, Top Leaf Dominican Ligero, you got Iconic Ligero, which is a seed strain that we developed, and that's the only cigar that we put that in. And then you got the Ecuadorian Maduro wrapper. That cigar is 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 an amazing cigar. You hear people say Cuban all the time, Cuban, 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 Cuban schmoovin', smoke a draconian. If you want the Touché. essence of Cuba, smoke a draconian. And we brought it to you from the Dominican Republic, okay? And then you want to kick it up a notch from there. Then you take and you say, you know what? Connecticut shade cigars, Connecticut shade cigars, Connecticut shade cigar. What am I going to do? 
I'm going to take a Connecticut cigar. I'm going to do a, a, a grade A shade grown wrapper from Ecuador, one of the best wrappers you can buy. And I'm going to put some Pennsylvania broadleaf in it and some Dominican Lijero, Viso, and Seiko. And I'm going to put our special binder that we don't disclose. We call it NBC. And we're going to make one of the best Connecticut cigars you've ever smoked. And not only are we going to do that, but we're going to throw our cojones on the table and we're going to box press it. Okay, which is almost impossible to do with a shade grown cigar because the wrapper is so sensitive, the cigar starts to morph in shape after you make it and it pops the wrapper. We figured out a way to develop a process, a multi pressing stage process to do that. So every single cigar is a Rhodes Scholar in its own right. That was very well said. That was longer than 45 seconds, but it was, re it was really well said. Well, if you believe it was 45 seconds, it was 45 seconds because perception is reality to the perceiver, my friend. This is so true. That's why I always tell Rob. <laughs> oh, man, I don't even know what to do with any of this. <laughs> so true, though. <laughs> no, I, I'm looking forward to that, uh, the Amadeus. That, uh, I know I've, you said some uh, samples are headed my way, so I'm, I'm ready to check that one out. Um, that More draconian really blew me away. I can't, I can't talk about that cigar enough. Um, oh, did you get it from this song? Uh, <laughs> enough of that. You know, Rock yeah. Me Amadeus. That ish is tight, man. That. Let me tell you, let me tell you what we did at the IPCPR show, man. <laughs> is uh, we had a big TV on the top of one of our display cases, and we put Falco on uh, every three minutes it would come up really, really loud and it would say, Rock me Amadeus, 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 Amadeus. And it was so awesome because we had retailers, they were like mosquitoes to a bug light. They would come to the booth, right? <laughs> but then we started having <laughs> we then we started having other manufacturers around us complain about the the sound of the music, you know, pulling customers that, you know, people were in their booth writing orders and people would turn around like, Where's that where's that coming from? You know, and so they were coming over asking us to turn the music down. So you know, we we got we got censored a little bit, but we still we still rock that Amadeus, man. Dude, I'm telling you, rock me Amadeus would probably pull retailers in like a fly trap. Because I mean, how can you just not like this song? I mean, it's just like you just want to like start dancing and start moving to it. You know, it's just so good. Anyways, enough of that. Logan, were you even alive? Listen, here's what we're gonna do. One, no. One IP Go when ahead, we Scott. get, can you hear me okay? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you're good. When we get, when we get super big, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw a party, like at the IPCPR. Maybe when we go to Vegas or something, we'll do the Palms Pool or something like that. But we'll we'll do it upright, okay? And I'm gonna have Falco there. He may look like the he may look like the Crypt Keeper by then. But I'm telling you what, I'm gonna have Falco there, and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have him singing "Rock Me Amadeus," man. The <laughs> entire time on repeat, no other music played. Just I was coming to that party. You don't get to take any breaks. Just keep singing. <laughs> now I have this image of the Crypt Keeper up there singing that, and that's actually pretty hilarious. You know what? You know what? But we'll put turd polish all around him, man. We'll have a bunch of girls, the really hot girls, dancing beside him like the old Robert Palmer song, you know. Addicted to love. Yeah, we'll have the the really hot girls on both sides of him, making him look good. We'll 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 rock it out right, man. Don't worry about it. I'm look. I don't know about you, Logan. I'm looking forward to this party. I hope we get invited. Dude, I hope we do. I mean, I'll be invited. You. Probably I mean, it was won't. kind you of your idea. Going. So I mean, hey. I hope that I hope that you get invited and I'm your plus one. We can we can discuss. We'll that figure later. it out. We'll figure it out. Um, that's funny. <laughs> Next question, what's the most difficult aspect about the cigar business? Huh. Well, all right. It's not making the cigars. It's not coming up with a blend. Selling them. It's not designing the boxes. It's not designing the logos. It's not it's not any of that. To me, the hardest part to uh, there's it's a two-stage process, all right? The hardest part for me is a tie. One is coming up with a name for a cigar. Because every time you do a trademark search, somebody is using that name for a size or some obsolete brand 
and you can't. I mean, I was thinking about calling the Amadeus at one point. Ian Watt. Ian Watt. Every other name was taken because that's the only thing we could come up with. Every. <laughs> Every every internet search that we did for six months, okay, came up empty-handed. And finally, I got tired of it. And then one day, I was having an epiphany, man. I don't know what it was, but I I, I was just sitting because I, you know, I, I kept bouncing them off guys that I really respect that are in the business. And I'm like, what do you think about that? Oh, that's a great name. That's a great name. And you do a search. Oh, this guy's using it for used it uh, 15 years ago for a petite Corona size or something like that. <laughs> and so it's very difficult to come up with a name for a cigar that will clear the trademark filters, man. That's, so that's not the first time that we've heard that. <clears throat> that's, that's, that's really not. And it's funny if you're, if you're watching the video, Logan is frozen with his head thrown back. Like he's laughing really hard. And I don't want to click on his video cause I really want that to stay there. No, I'm not. I'm very much alive. On on the screen that everybody else sees, it's frozen in that. Are you <laughs> serious? Fantastic. For real? Yeah, it is. Hey, we can still hear you. Um, oh, well, that's so, all that matters. Yeah, it is all that matters. Um, another another question here. This one's from uh, Jared Grillet. Uh, he's he wants to know uh, who who designed your logo, uh, and he wants to uh, get permission from you to use it uh, for an armband tattoo. You know what? My friend, if you want to use it for an armband tattoo, tattoo yourself up. Uh, but he won't do it. <laughs> I don't think you will either. No, he's a. He's we're a actually guy. going to make that part of our events uh, eventually. Uh, we're going to have, but it's going to be like a temporary tattoo. If you can call a sharpie tattoo, a temporary tattoo. But we're going <laughs> to we're going to have the spider stamp, and it's going to be sharpie ink, and we're going to have it when you come to the event. If you want to get if you want to get inked, we're gonna ink you right there wherever you want inked. And let me tell you something, that will be really interesting when the girls start showing up at the events because they come up with all kinds of creative uh, ways that uh, areas that they want to be inked at. So that, yeah, the uh, the inker might have a good job. Although we're gonna bring we're gonna bring Logan over there, and I'm thinking, Logan, right on your your left or right cheek. We'll I just want some, I want some teardrops. That are iconically shaped. That's what I was. No, I was thinking about we'll put the spy, the the logo on his forehead because after he passes out, you're going to want to draw some other things on his cheeks. There you go. That's a good point. Actually, some, I have some to, wieners. Yeah. I've, I've got the bigger forehead. Logan has more hair than I do. So this is true. If you need forehead uh, square footage, that you're definitely going with me. That's why I have the beanie on. Uh, hey, you, know what, you know what, Rob? You know what my dad tells me? He says grass doesn't grow on a busy street, my friend. If you got traffic up there, there's no room for grass to grow. So be happy. That just means you're smarter than everybody else. Uh, God, see, you know, it's about time somebody recognized that. Oh, oh, that's it's, such so true. True. it's such a burden. I know. Uh, I, I had it's a minority in a world of ignorance, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's just it's unfortunate, and it's I mean, you know, it's hard sometimes to deal with. I mean, especially with Logan. I mean, he's you know he he talks a good game, but sometimes hey, listen. Sometimes I might act like a complete derelict, them. but I'm the smartest man, at least on Cigar Federation. You're the I smartest man in the room, right? Well, the, yeah, there, there you go, yeah. Not, yeah, pretty much. Perfect. We're all the smartest man in the room. I mean, if Truman uh, was in here, we'd be screwed. Yeah. Truman's Logan's dog. He's uh, he's pretty smart. Oh, but he's a high-class lab, Australian labradoodle. He's smart. Logan, jump into some of these questions. I'm going down these right. audience questions. All right, next one. Uh, da, 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 da. let's pick one from Punch Nubbin. Haven't seen you around in a while, homie. I'm going to ask your question. I have a Draconian, which is 15 months old, which I intend on smoking real time soon. Have you found the Recluse cigars age well, or are they designed to be smoked as soon as you receive them? And how much age would you recommend, if any? Okay, good, good question. Zero. Here's the thing, all right? Every tobacco leaf in the world has ammonia in it, okay? And you got to get that ammonia out. And how you do that is in the fermentation process. You wet down the bales of tobacco in the fermentation rooms, and as the moisture evaporates out, it brings traces of ammonia out with it. So the more you do that, the more ammonia is going to come out. Now, most factories ferment anywhere from three to six months. Tobacco Leyendas Cubanas, my factory, is the only factory in the world 
that ferments every single leaf and every single recluse cigar for two years. Okay, so what that means is you get all the flavor of the blend, but it's the smoothest, cleanest delivery of that flavor of any cigar that you're ever going to smoke in your life. Nobody else in the world ferments for two years. Okay, and the reason why we do that is because we blend cigars that we want you to get all the flavor of any other cigar that you can smoke out there in the market. But it's going to be a cigar that's not a one and done cigar. We want you to be able to enjoy four, five, six, seven of our cigars a day, and then you think, hey, I might be able to have another one of those. That was really great. Well, we want you to be able to enjoy what we're doing and the passion that we put into our products as often as you like. You do not have to put our cigars up for two days, two weeks, two months, or two years. You can smoke the cigar the day that you get it, and it will be fantastic. That's the short answer. You want the long answer? <laughs> No, I like that one. No, that's good. I mean, the one that I smoked, and I just keep going back to the cigar because I really did love it. Um, <clears throat> and, Logan, you can tell me to shut up whenever you want. No, you go ahead, buddy. Um, the one that I smoked, I mean, that cigar probably went through a lot because you dropped it off with the guys at IPCPR. Who knows what kind of condition it was kept in. It was tossed in the bag. From my, that bag, it was tossed into my bag. And from my bag, it was tossed in the backpack, went on the plane, came home. And I, pro I think I had it in my humidor for probably about two weeks before I smoked it. And it smoked like it had been in there for six months or a year or whatever. Um, so I can attest to that. I mean, the, the cigar in and of itself, right when I smoked it, was great. I think it's got great aging potential. I don't think it's going to get any worse. It's just going to get better. Um, you're going to lose a little bit of that spice that was in there, obviously. I mean, you, you, that happens when you, when you let the cigar sit. But um, I think if he's been sitting on that cigar for 18 months, it's ready to go. Yeah, the, uh, we were extremely, it, it, all joking aside, we were extremely honored, Rob, by that 94 rating box buy on that Draconian Toro. That was especially because you got it out of the IPCPR bag. I mean, those cigars were sent a month ahead of time, and Tobacconist Magazine held those cigars, and then they put them in the bag. Now, we got a lot of retail traffic from those bags and what we did with that cigar and the map and everything. But a lot of retailers t came to us and told us that the, some of the, that their cigar in the bag got crushed because of all the magazines and stuff and yeah. that were in there as well. So, I mean, for that cigar to sit for a month at Tobacconist Magazine and then to go in those bags in the middle of the desert and then to sit there and then to be around in all those, all those magazines in the bag, and for you to smoke that cigar and give that cigar a 94 rating, I'm hanging my hat on that one, brother. Who that comes on, I like that. Yeah. Hang, hang I, your hat on I my I wouldn't hang your hat on Rob's palate. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There, that, was too, that. That, was, that was low hanging fruit. <laughs> that, um, was, that, you just, that was up on a tee, and I was just a yeah. kid playing tee ball right there. Yeah, if you, if, Ooh, that was too easy. Bit, I would have been disappointed if you didn't take a shot at that. Um, guys, you're listening to Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in. Here with Scott Weeks of uh, Recluse Cigars. Um, talking about a little bit of everything. Having a lot of fun. Um, Logan, last segment's brought to us by who? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> uh, next one's brought to our friends Moy Ruiz, Danny and Nelson. They play dominoes. Come to Cigar Federation. Check out the ads. You can buy the Nunchuck, the Prieto, which is not that good, and the Habana, which is actually really good. Click on the ad, go buy their cigar, and whatever. You didn't give me time to prep, man. That's all you're getting. Oh, no, you knew it was coming up. This is. I did not, because usually hey, I'll do the first one, you jack I'll, them up. I'll help you out there on that one. Nelson with uh, La Ogata and Moya Ruiz, that guy's on point. He's doing a really good job. I love their cigars, the, uh, the Habano and the Prieto, and the Nunchuck will, will uh, make a bulldog snap his chain. So those guys, you know, those guys are, are trying to do things the right way, and they seem to make, be making progress in the business. I'm proud of them, you know. Thank you for chiming in there. They're good guys, and uh, that nunchuck will rip your face right off. It's, it, uh, even I thought that was pretty strong. That's, that's a strong, <laughs> strong pretty cigar. strong. But that's that Prieto, I, I enjoyed that cigar. That thing was garbage. We, Logan, we just have different tastes, and that's what uh, that's what makes this great. Dude, I, I love San Andreas, too. Like, literally... It's like six out of my top ten cigars this year use the San Andreas. That's just not a good cigar. 
But hey, I wouldn't say anything on radio that I haven't told you to your face, Danny Nelson. I've told you that to your face. Yeah. And then you try to punch me. Hey, hey Logan. Hey, Logan. Yeah. I got a question for you. Hmm. Were, were you ever in the military, bro? No. Do I look like it? Bro, I, I, did, I, did, I was gonna. I was gonna say that you are obviously not a veteran because you don't know how to step around the landmines. No. no. Just step right on them, and you you don't just step on them; you stomp on them. Oh, yeah. I do, and I do it. To, well, I do it, and I try to do it in a political way. But what always happens <laughs> is I always end up offending someone, and then th then they get all pissed and like, well, but it's age with you know Nicaragua, and I'm just like, that's what everybody uses. You use the same tobacco everyone uses. The cigar sucks, and I just I just it just. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know what? You guys are awesome, man. The two of you, you're like good cop, bad cop. I love Dude, it. Dude, I, I know it, man. I know. Everyone always says we're a good combination, but yeah. I don't know. We'll yeah, see. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We're only on episode 106. We've been doing it for almost three years, but. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know how long it's going to last. What was that? You guys ought to call yourself Zig and Zag. <laughs> Something. Yeah. Yeah, we we uh we rarely we rarely agree, but I know Logan, I know you like that draconian. I I don't know, I, I haven't really heard your uh your full opinion on it. I know you, I think you've smoked one or two, maybe. I smoked one, but not enough where I can give an opinion. But You'll let me say just it say, next week. I'll say it next week. No, it was good. I mean, it was it was good. I mean, I'm not gonna go out and say it had notes of citrusy grapefruit. I can't do that. But I mean, it was an enjoyable cigar. I mean, I had several during the day, and I could still taste it. So if I can do that, then it passes the initial sniff test. It did not have notes of... It's of, not citrus and nuts. It's juju guava nut berry, man. Get it hey right. Hey, man. Hey, don't... Listen, one of these days, I'm going to make the cigar bloggers cheat sheet to reviews and just put down a bunch of bull crap like flavors and then just watch how many of them appear in reviews. I'm telling you, it would happen. I'm and the burn, the burn was wonky. Dude, the burn... A wonky... You cannot... I mean, I'm telling you, man. I've the never heard the word wonky before I started reading cigar reviews. Well, dude, <laughs> did you read that from me? Because there was a I girl think I've that used I it actually since I read. I know <laughs> because it's it's such a great word. Well, Logan invented Logan invented his own hashtag. Yeah, did, what was it again? Dude, listen, I've invented names of cigars. I've helped just given people nicknames. Dude, I'm like just full of like creation. Well, we're getting off topic. The point that I was making was Anyways, go ahead, the Rob. point that I wanted to make was that we don't see eye to eye a lot, but I can see the the uh, the draconian B in the cigar that we would agree on. That's that's the point I was getting at because it's 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 a little bit stronger than the cigars that I normally gravitate towards, um, and I know that's that's really where your wheelhouse is. So well, I got a quick question here from Man Angel, and we've talked about this on the show before. Um, but he asked the question, and it's in reference to uh, in two bar rolling style. I can um, answer this. I know you can, but I don't want you to. Um, <laughs> that just came out so naturally. So I know, uh, I Scott, give us a little bit of insight. What's the difference between like a standard roll and an in two bar roll? Okay, you'll hear three different uh, terms for for in two bar. It's it, it's called three different names. It's called in two bow. Uh, E N T U B A O. It's called intubado, which is A D O, and it's called intubar. All three of those words mean tubing. Intubado is kind of like the slang. Intubar is a little more, you know, fluffy. And then intubado is like if you want to wear a tuxedo and say it at the same time. Okay. <laughs> so, but all three, all three of them mean tubing. All right. So there's two ways to do into intubado. I like to say into bile, so guys that are listening, remember it's the same thing as into bar, what Rob said. So into bile, there's two ways to roll it. One is called into bile, and one is called true into bile. Okay? Now, let, let, I'm sorry, let me, let me go back four steps. We're going to have a pop quiz at the end of this, so I want to make sure that you guys remember this, all right? So the first way to roll a cigar is a lot of people call it the accordion fold. Uh, it's basically folding the filler leaf back and forth, each filler leaf, and then you bunch it. And then you put the binder leaf on it, and then you put it in the press. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what the Cubans do and what we do is called intubile. Now, now I get to the two stages of intubile. One is regular intubile, which some people do so that they can say they're doing intubar or intubile, which instead of... All right. 
All right, let me get let, let me see. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to what we do, and then I'm gonna bring him back. All right, what we do is true into Bob. It's taking each filler leaf individually, and it's rolling each one by hand. Okay, and then you take those three or four tubes, depending on how many leaves you, how many different variations you're using in the blend, and you pull those three roll those three or four rolls together, and then you put the the binder on it, and then you put it in the press. Now what that does is that creates air channels in the cigar. So it enables, it cuts our production down by 30%. We can't roll as many cigars as everybody else. But it enables us to sit here and say that every single recluse cigar that you smoke is guaranteed to have an effortless draw every single time you smoke it. Okay? That's because we do true intubao. Now, there's another way to do intubao, which is because a lot of rollers are getting paid based on production. Okay? So they want to roll as many cigars as they can. So... It, a lot, a lot, some manufacturers, in order to be able to say that they do into bar into bow, what they do is they take all the filler leaves and they put them flat on top of each other, and then they roll them all together, <clears throat> so that they can say it's into bow. But that is not true into bow. True into bow is 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 going to have an effortless draw every single time that you smoke it. Now you'll notice that every line that we do in Recluse, there's only one size that we make out of 24 sizes that's not box press. And the reason why we box press cigars is because, you know, a lot of people don't know why cigars are really box press. They think it's because to keep the cigar from rolling around on the table. Well, hey, that's a good benefit, but that's not the real reason, okay? You need three things for combustion. You need fuel, air, and heat. If you compress the airspace in the blend, you force the cigar to burn slower and burn cooler. Now, if you do that in conjunction with the regular bunch filler, the folded filler, the draw never lives up to its full potential. But if you do it in conjunction with the into bow, the true into bow, what you get is you get the best of everything. You get a cigar that burns slower, burns cooler, and has an effortless draw. And then in our case, with the two years of fermentation, you get all the flavor and you get, like I said, the smoothest, cleanest delivery of just about any cigar you're ever going to smoke. And, and just to add one last note, the reason why we do all this is because one of our main company mantras that JR and I agreed on from the very beginning is that if you know the very best way to do something, why do it the second best way and have to explain yourself down the road? Just do it right the first time and do it the very best way you know how. Make the very best product that you can, and you don't have to make excuses for it. I like it. Logan, you can learn from that, I think. <laughs> no, that was that was a we've, – we've asked that question before, and people have explained that before, not in the detail that you explained it. I, I like that. I mean, it gives, it gives a little bit more of a – I have, a, I feel like I have a full understanding of it now. Um, so hopefully that uh, that answered uh, Man Angel's question. Um, on that note, though, Scott, we're out of time. Our uh, AFRN segment's up. So um, appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, you know, stick around. We're going to get into the the giveaways and everything after that. But uh, appreciate you hanging out. Like, and just real quick, let everybody know that's listening on AFRN where they can find uh, Reckless Cigars. They can reach out to you guys online, websites, and that kind of stuff. ReclusCigar.com. And listen, I want to add one last thing to all of our military guys. You know, everybody's got their sappy little love, warm, fuzzy, cuddly thing they want to tell the military. But listen, I was there. I was out there. I was back in 1982 to 1986 during the line of death, Gulf of Sidra, Qaddafi crisis and all that, away from home for years at a time. So I want to tell you guys, I understand what, you, what you're going through. You guys are going through a lot more than I ever did. And I want you to know that, at least for me and for my wife and my kids, we appreciate you. Enough said. Well said. Well said. Appreciate that. Um, again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next week. Logan, you're supposed to have this queued up. Who do we got next I week? I do. It's our year in review show that I will not be attending because I'm going to be in Boston smoking with Shooter. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I didn't know that. So, yeah, yeah next week we're doing a year, year in reviews. We're going to have... Uh, who do we got? Seth, this, Seth from Seth's Humidor is coming on. Yeah, Tony, uh, big guy. Seth the dojo, guy. Well, the dojo on there, and uh, Aaron from Blind Man's Puff, and maybe some more guys. So I'm not really sure, but 
that's I know that's going to be a, that'll be a fun show. We get to talk about all kinds of different stuff. So, uh, again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Find us at cigarfederation.com. Scott, thanks for taking the time to hang out with us. Um, everybody, have a good weekend. Everybody, stay safe. Hey, we're fucking back, you fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah, so, so, Scott, this is the segment where you can say shit, bitch, cock balls, and all that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm good. I, I, I purged myself earlier, so I'm good. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I'll tell you guys, the uh, the off-air pregame show had me a little bit concerned. Cause, uh, oh, no, not at all. He's fucking uh, legit. No, I was I, I was worried. He gets on, he's like, what the fuck kind of unit you guys running here? This is some bullshit. And you guys didn't send me the link until like five minutes before the show. What the fuck, blah, blah, blah. I was a little bit worried. I was a little no, bit worried. I wasn't at all. That was, yeah, it was, it was fucking teddy bear. In the wash, it all comes out in the wash. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He was, no, Scott was, uh, I'm just, I'm just bullshitting, but. You're just being an asshole, Rob. That's Man. You know. So, Logan, why don't you, uh, let it, let everyone We got know, two yeah. fucking mazos. Two fucking mazos. And what we're going to do. Hey, Logan. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, I sent you extra cigars besides the, uh, besides the bundles. How come you, are you smoking them or what? You mean this little guy? That little fellow? Oh, uh, uh, okay. There. So we got, hold on. Unless there's something hidden down here that I haven't seen. I'll put some more in there, man. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Logan will go out of his way to prove a point. Oh, yes, he will. Watch him. He's going to try and blame the UPS driver. Watch before it's he over. He did say that. that he Unless felt you like can smoke this newspaper. You felt like somebody had opened up the uh, the package. And no, passed. I did. I was like, man. I go, what's going on here? Then I see my name's written on it it's for Logan. And I was like, oh. Logan, I, I could swear, because I packed that myself, I could swear I stuck two Amadeus and a Draconian in there. You know what you did? Is you probably sent it to Rob, and you did it subconsciously. Woo! You know and what? that's okay. I forgive you. Maybe I did send it to Rob. Hey, yeah. you probably did. And you know what? I forgive you. I'm sorry, man. That's cool, man. I ain't, I ain't butthurt about it. Hey, but look, I got a pretty background. <laughs> no, we've, we've got plenty of stuff to give away. So, um, I don't know. Logan, how many winners are we picking today? Well, we're going to do some stuff on the site next week with the Draconians. Okay. So, those are going away. And because Logan's fucking lazy, and we appreciate all... Hundred people that are watching. Are you serious, bro? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. What's are up? you really gonna do what I think you're gonna do? What do you think I'm gonna fucking do? I think you're gonna try and give yourself a cigar enema for the least amount of work possible. Boom. Probably, yeah. What let's What would you like for me to do? Let's spread the Christmas joy, man. Oh, but uh, Scott, listen. These people are on here on Cigar Federation. They get Christmas fucking joy every goddamn week. But I will do it for you. And I, I can't tell you how sick I am of people. Where are my goddamn things? And I'm like, bro, the show was last Tuesday. There's been like three business days since that occurred. Well, here, like, let me, can I interject real quick? No, Rob. I, we've had a request from the chat room that they pick, that you pick 35 winners. How about five winners? <laughs> I mean, is this like, let's make a deal here? Logan's the one shipping it. Hey, hey, Logan, why don't we pick five winners, send them each ten cigars, and then you'll still have ten cigars left over for next week. And they get five of each blend. God, we are making this way too fucking complicated. Why don't we just give away one to the grand prize winner, and then I'll send out four or five packs. How about that? Okay, that's good. There we go. So... If the first <laughs> fuck, I can't even think now. I'm just thinking about all this but, shit. No, but you gotta you gotta break up those uh you gotta break up those mazos so everybody gets. Rob, listen. Why don't you just shut your fucking pie hole right now, <laughs> and I'll fucking deal with it. You first deal you will be Logan at CigarFederation.com. Blue cigars, your full name and address, and tell me. Hey Logan, I, I got an idea, bro. Can I? I got an idea. All right. Ask him to tell you what is special about the Amadeus, and see who comes up on the on the chat and tells you what makes the Amadeus special. 
or what makes actually what makes any of the recluse special? What are two things that we talked about during the show that are unique and specific to recluse cigars? And four of those people get the five pack, and then we'll ask another question for the grand prize. I know the answer. All right, that that'll work, Rob. <laughs> Logan, you're getting so pissed. <laughs> oh, man, we're making this so difficult. Hey, Sorry, Logan, no. give me a couple more fucks and three more shits, and we'll be Fuck, ball, <laughs> shit, cock, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's fucking hot in here. Uh, you don't need I'm to take off my shirt. I, I just, you know, I do everything else for the show, Logan. I get the I get the guests. I line up. Hey, 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 hey. I get everything you set up the on guests website. Because you want I create to. all the graphics. I send out all the emails. I make sure that we get people to be on the show and people to come watch it. The least you can do is send out some damn prizes in a timely manner. First of all, motherfucker. <laughs> First of all, the I offer to help you book me. You're like, I want to own it. So I say, okay, Rob. You know, being a good motherfucking CEO like I am, I know how to delegate. And second, all the shit you're talking about doing doesn't cost you any money. Shipping costs money. And you know how to listen to people, bitch. And hold hey, on for one second. Hey, send me the bill for the shipping, okay? Oh, dude, I'm going to pay for it. It's fine. I'm just giving Rob fucking <laughs> shit. Bastard, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Listen. Listen. <laughs> I grew up on a farm in central Missouri. Oh, God, here we go. I grew up on a farm, and I fell into a sewer. Hey, Rob. I did fall in a sewer. Let's find out where that farm is, and let's go interview some sheep. <laughs> we don't have sheep, brother. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's purebred Angus. No, I did. The, the farm's legit. Like, apparently, if you've eaten steak in the last 20 years, you've eaten some. I was going to say you've eaten some of Logan's meat, but I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that almost gets back to how you joined the club, you know, what you were saying beforehand. All right. Okay. So, anyway, so I'm, we're picking 25 winners and they all get bundles. What's going on? Damn it. Like, <laughs> here's what we got we are doing. You're getting. Fuck me in the ass. Four four people are hey, getting Logan. five cigars. Yes, sir. Logan, what was that word again you came up with earlier? Scheiser ton. Scheiser ton. <laughs> four people are getting five cigars, and that's based on knowing two things that makes Recluse, a.k.a. Iconic Leaf, special. The first four people answer it right, and then we're apparently coming up with another question for the 20 giveaway. So, in no particular order, before we announce these, what are acceptable answers that we can accept? Because people... Well, we know what the a lot of things. answers are. We can't they, announce they, what they there's are. There's a lot. I mean, there's... Can I just read them? There's vertical integration. There's no, rolling into... No, no, you're a bunch of answers. Well, who gives a fuck? I already got... 30 right. entries? Who gives a fuck? Oh, like, they've already entered. Okay. Then. Yeah. Into Bottle, Vertical Integration. I've never met for two years. Now? My name is Scott. Like, <laughs> there's a lot. Can, can I interrupt? That, no. Listen. Go ahead, Scott. Did, uh, did, nobody can hear us except for the three of us, right? No. The sure. whole fucking world can hear us. No, everybody's listening. We're still live. Are we really? No, we're not live, but, I mean, can we're the not chat on room hear us? We're, we're live on Cigar Federation. Anybody who's watching the YouTube video will still hear us. Anybody who listens to the uh, podcast will still hear us. We're not on AFRN anymore. All right. Well, let me say this then. I'll say it in the abstract. There's two processes that we do in manufacturing that make our cigars very unique. Logan, I'll, I'll, I think I'll send the answers to you in the chat right here. I know what the freaking okay. answers are. You know, well, okay, then hold on. So that one's not answer? correct. And that one's not correct either. Yeah, well, then, you, yeah, that's the thing. we got to find people who got the answers right. That you only like, answer, Buzz, you only put in one answer, you dummy. I like Buzz. Nope, that's not right either. So, while Logan's figuring this out, whoa, Scott, did we lose you? I think we lost him. No, he's frozen. You're still there. Well, I was going to ask him a question while you were trying to figure out your, your stuff here, but I think we lost him. Well, I can see myself moving. Oh, there you are. So... We're in. Uh, we've got quite a bit of a uh, an ADD society here. So what can we? What's what's on the horizon for you guys? What's going to be coming up, dude? We got. We've got right now. I mean, did... 
All right, we got one winner. Oh, what is that that you got there? Those That's are a fancy. I can't see because I'm too busy. No, there's so those are those are samplers, yeah. They got nine. Don't nine call them samplers. No, not samplers. Sample samplers are a five pack of robustos. Okay. <laughs> these All are right. for, like these are coming the own boxes. What are they? Six cigars, individual right, boxes. Nine. Okay. Nine. Now this is this is called the Elf oh. Pack. It stands for Eight Legged Freak. Huh. Okay. Okay. But there's nine cigars in there, right? Yeah. So <laughs> spiders do don't have that? nine legs. You're paying you're paying for eight cigars, eight legged freak deal, and you're getting the ninth one free. But here's the thing. These are these are shapes that we invented. I'm gonna show you. Hang on just a second. All right, I'm gonna pull out the draconium to show you, right? Yeah. That's such a good cigar. This is called the sidewinder. Okay? The sidewinder is square pressed on the sides. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it like that. Square pressed on the sides. Okay, yeah. Okay? And then it's round on the front and the back. All right? Huh. Now, we developed the cigar so that when you squeeze the cap, it pops open. See that? You don't need to cut it. You don't need to cut it. It pops open, and you just grab the flap and pull the flap off, and it's ready to smoke. Okay? Now, we only make that in the Amadeus and the Draconian. We do not make it in the OTG. The only way that we offer all three sizes and all three blends of the Sidewinder is in the Elf Pack. Okay? Now, then we've got the Canoe. Can you see that okay? All right, now the canoe, basically, if I can use a Ghostbuster reference. You can. All right. The canoe combines the functionality of the box press I'm telling you about to compress the airspace in the blend. It combines the functionality of the box press with the functionality of a perfecto where the wrapper to filler composition changes as you smoke it. Wow. So the cigar goes through six different flavor profile changes from start to finish. Three on the way up and three on the way down. This is a Picasso. This has the functionality of about five different cigars into one. Now, we only make the Kanu, K-A-N-U, in the OTG blend in boxes of 20. The only way to get it in the Amadeus and the Draconian in all three sizes is in the Elf set, Eight-Legged Freak. Now, what you'll see at certain retailers around the country is that every year from Halloween to the end of the year, we do a promotion because we want Recluse Cigars to be the biggest box-moving product in every retailer in the United States. What we do is every time an end consumer buys a box of any recluse cigars from Robusto and higher at select retailers, not every retailer, select retailers that do the program. Every time an end consumer buys a box of recluse cigars, Robusto and higher, they get one of those hundred dollar elf sets free. Wow. And they're not they're not samplers. They're <laughs> special edition connoisseur sets. Okay? That's a much better way to say it. <laughs> yes, special edition connoisseur set. So, like, if you want to get that deal, you'll call, like, Smoke In in Florida, uh -huh. their 10 store chain, or you'll call Corona Cigars, okay, or, or retailers like that, big uh, chain retailers that have websites as well. Those guys, uh, those guys offer that deal. Wow, that's pretty sweet. I might actually do that because I could use a box of those draconians anyway. You mean a sampler? And, and a sampler. That's a hell of a sampler. That's a hell of a sampler. Why don't you just go piss on the door of a church, man? <laughs> hey, just go, just go up to your whatever your closest church is, Logan, and just go piss on the front door, okay? Hey, man. Yeah. I'm that half. That's those are angry words. I know, that's man. Not a sample. I, I did that for Logan. 
Yeah, and well, that no, was, I, that was I, directed at you, Rob. It's, it's directed at Logan. That's that's uh, pretty standard for all of our guests. So I, I know that's. <laughs> I got to be the fucking ass. ass. Uh, no, that's those are sweet connoisseur sets, special edition connoisseur sets. I like that. But those, uh, the the second, the longer, and I, the name is escaping me. What was Kanu, the name? K A N U. Kanyu, the, the that's the long one. Yeah. How that one that you showed me, where it goes through all the the different uh, the different sources or the different flavor profiles. How long does it take to smoke one of those? Well, um, first. First of all, we invented both of those shapes, the Sidewinder and the Canoe, and we have trademarks on both of them. The, uh, the Canoe, in any of the three, okay, let's see. All right, the number one, the number two, the Canoe number one, the number two, and the number three, in any of the three blends, this normally retails for 1025, 1095, and 11.95. This is a six, a seven, and an eight-inch cigar. Wow! And there, and it's and it's a one-hour, two-hour, and a three-hour smoke. <laughs> three hours. Logan, can you sit down? I I, could, I I don't think I could sit and smoke with you for three hours. I don't think I could stand you more than an hour, and we're past that. Yeah, we are. We are. Let's do these giveaways real quick. Those are uh, those uh, limited editions are pretty sweet, though. If we had two hours on the show, we'd be able to break all that stuff down, but one hour is kind of short, you know, especially yeah. when we're talking about, um, you know, girlfriends and wives. And yeah, it would get nice and personal. We yeah, man. Down. We could break we down Logan's uh, separation anxiety issues and, and all of that. Hey, man, listen. All right. So I got to tell you guys one thing before we do the contest. I've done a lot of shows, okay, and this is one of my favorites so far. It should be your favorite. It's, more, it's favorite? my top three, man. Top, there's good. only like three good shows out there. But it's not number three. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, oh, you, took, you took a compliment and made it like you, you took the luster off of that. That's not good. Hey, man, I know. If, right. Hey, man, but if you said Coop was ahead of us, that would be cool. I'd be okay with that. Let me, let me tell you this. Out of all the shows I've ever done, this is the one I felt the most comfortable doing. There we go. That's that's probably that's a win most, in my book. We don't take we don't take ourselves too seriously. No, no, that's no. good. But okay, Logan, get these giveaways done. Do it. Okay, so the correct answer for you derelicts out there would have been rolling into bar plus two year fermentation. So the first four people that got that correct were as follows: Craig Greenwood. And by the way, I will send out your Maya self. I forgot I'm an idiot. Uh, Shooter, because Shooter pays attention. Shooter. And Jose Managel, because he pays attention. And then Jason Myers. Winners. Winners all. So how do we want to give away this Mazo? I'll just give you my address. Nah, how about no? I mean, all right, I'll tell you what. Um, the the My partner, who owns the other part of the factory... Deal. Whoever Whoever knows his name... Oh, there you go. What That's a good point? one. Let's just take that out of the chat room. They don't have to email you. First person who puts it up in the chat room. That makes it and, easier, right? And the answer is not shooter, Dave. <laughs> it has to be the, the, the initials and the last name. Yeah, let's let's I think they're on a little bit of a delay, so they'll catch up in a minute. But um, so with those uh, I might have to do that. Pick up a box and then get that uh, that fancy schmancy uh, connoisseur limited, limited edition, edition sampler. Sampler. <laughs> hey, but you know what makes hey, it sound fancy? Wait, wait a minute, Logan. Box Logan, sampler. Box sampler. On, you just pissed on the door of another church, okay? Hey, man, but it is a sampler, though, bro. No, but listen, you 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 pissed on three churches at once, okay? Because oh, we've got a winner. We don't make limited edition cigars. We don't make cigars people can't buy. We make special edition cigars that are spectacular that people can buy every day. Okay? There you go. So like that, that canoe and the Sidewinder, they're not limited editions. Ten years from now, they'll still be on the market. And they're not samplers. <laughs> man, you just do not like the connotation of a sampler, do you, Connoisseur. Man? Well, you know, he's got a point. Connoisseur collection sounds so much better than sampler. 
Well, yeah, but there's five different robustos from five different blends that a manufacturer has to offer, or it's or it's five robustos of the same blend, or or five toros. It's just like an I don't give a shit set sampler. Is what it is. <laughs> what, what hey, I don't think there's there's no I don't give a no, shit involved in my we, answer. When, when you but put, it is a Vitola sampler, right? I mean, it's all of your blends in three different sizes. You guys are arguing semantics at this point. You know what? That is a semantic that Logan brought up, but the blends that are in that special edition kind of sewer series there set are blends that you cannot buy. That's a good point. Shelves of retailers. That's a good point. You can't buy them. So they are limited in a no, sense that they're not. limited that you can't get them <laughs> everywhere. Logan, dude, just stop, dude. They're not, they're not limited, Logan, because you can buy as many of them as you want. And but they're only available in that one set. Got it. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Uh -oh. wait a minute. They're only available in that one set. But are you say are you saying everybody can hear us? That's in the chat room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like you said, Rob, they're only available in that one set. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm not I'm not expanding on it because because you don't want to you don't want to give anything away. Yeah, but you never know what's coming down the pike a year or two from now. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Well, you never know. You never know. Maybe they're maybe they're going to be available. To get them in boxes someday soon. Who knows? You never know. I doubt it, but hey, you know. You Stranger know. things have happened. Yeah. Stranger things have happened. All right, we've got a winner. Logan, do you know who it is? I know who it is. I know it is. Mishman. The Mishman. He's got a great avatar. It looks like he's like a '70s like creeper with a no, it's, van. That's Jack Nicholson coming through the the door in The Shining. That but he's is got not. On, he's got on Ray Bans and he's smoking a cigar. That's exactly what it is. I wish I could see that. That that sounds pretty cool. It's oh, pretty I gotta sweet. look at this shit. He took that uh, he took that graphic and added to it. You can see it <clears throat> if you click on his. Uh, I'm working on it. Click on his deal. So Mishman needs to email you, Logan. Yeah, I already said that. Okay, good. So that's and he want God, he want a whole Mazo. Good for him. I don't know, good for this Mish man. Mish man ought to ask him to send him one cigar at a time. <laughs> it's the yes. gift that keeps yes. on giving the whole year. Yeah, UPS <laughs> overnight freight, one cigar at a time. The there gift. it is. That's a, actually that's Logan. That is in the contract. Yeah. There's yeah. no. Con I don't see a contract. No, I, I didn't sign anything. I know. All you right. Did. All right. We it's it's we've reached the end of our show. I've had a great time, Scott. This has been a lot of fun hanging out with you. Me thank too. you for put thank you for putting up with us uh, and and our uh, uh, irreverence. Would that be a good way to Being put it? Mutual, my friend. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. Um, love the cigars. Really looking forward to trying the Amadeus. And I need to track down the OTG too because I haven't smoked that one yet either. Uh, so looking for forward to that. Um, really do appreciate you hanging out. Everybody, you can find them. It's recluscigars.com. Uh, you can find them there, and uh, on the site you can find your local retailers. So there's always going to be somebody near you that's got that. Not cigars, though. Okay, recluse cigar. Oh, recluse cigar. Beg your pardon. Yeah, recluscigar.com. Uh, I'm sure if you Google it, it'll come up. You'll find yeah, it. Yeah, just put up anything. It'll come up. Yeah, <laughs> it'll show up. <laughs> All right, guys. Appreciate the support. We'll catch you next week. Uh, it'll be a fun show with uh, uh, Seth and. Um, and the dojo and uh, Blind Man's Puff and all that will be a good show. So appreciate it. Everybody have a good weekend. Everybody stay safe, stay dry, and have uh, and uh, smoke something good and tell us about it. Don't forget to rotate your cigars. Ooh, you know what I need to do is uh, I need to go get my tires rotated and get a nail taken out of my tire. I just saw that yesterday. Thank you for All right. Me. You're welcome. We can stop now. On that note, guys, we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys next week.